Welcome. The Google team is excited to inform you of this amazing update. Google has launched a way to simplify workflows in Google Docs with a new smart chip. The new smart chip is called Variable Chip. This variable chip, this new feature, will make document creation for things like invoices, contracts, and broader communications so much easier. The variable chip will allow you to simply predefine and insert placeholders such as client name, contract number, address, and so much more. Using these variable chips will allow you to have dynamic placeholders and ways to make templates creation so much easier. We'll be able to implement custom building blocks, which is coming shortly, or using the document as a template. We're going to go ahead and dive deeper about this amazing update. As you can see, I'm currently in a Google Doc. As I previously mentioned, this new feature, Variable Chips, is a great way to use in creation of templates. And one of the templates that many of us may need is a email template. You may be aware of or not, regardless, I'm going to show you today, is that there is a building block called Email Draft. And this is a great way to incorporate the new feature as well with an Email Draft building block. Because many of us need email templates, and sometimes we need those variables, those placeholders, to just quickly be changed, and this is a great way to do so. So in this particular document, I have already insert, and I went to building blocks, and I clicked email draft. If you need to learn more about the email draft update, go ahead and check the description below to learn more on how this works. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and type in the email address that I want to send this particular email to. I can type in the at sign and type in the person that I want to send this to. You can add multiple users as you can see. Just type another at sign, pull up the directory through the search menu of the at sign and you'll be able to add more. You can do the same thing with the CCC and the BCC. For now we're just going to do the two. Then you'll notice in the subject line reminder submit timesheet. As we know timesheets are due weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, and the due date is constantly a, that's right, a variable. It constantly changed. So this is a great example where I can add the new smart chip variable chip. So I'm going to go ahead and use the at search menu. I'm going to go ahead and use the at symbol. And when I do so, you'll notice under smart chips, you will have a new option, choose variable. Once you do that, you name your first variable. I'm going to go ahead and call it due date and hit create. Now, if you don't like the app search menu, no worries. You can go, always go to insert, locate smart chips, and then find the variable chip. Now, this is great. I have the variable right here, but I also want the due date to say, just a quick reminder that time sheets are due at the day that I want to put in there, and then 5 p.m. is going to be the time always inside this email draft. So now, this time I'm going to go ahead and do the app menu again, and this time I can just type in due date because that is one of my variables that I've already created, and I'm going to select due date. You'll notice on the right hand side next to your side panel is that you have a new variable dashboard, and it will allow you to add new variables here as well, and then, um, obviously you can select the variable that you are wanting to edit or delete, select delete by clicking on the trash pan or you can click the pencil and edit the name if you choose to. So again, a great way to adjust your variables in the masses with this dashboard on the right. Now, you have created this amazing template it's inside your Google Doc, but now the due date needs to be filled in. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the due date, and I'm going to type in the date that the timesheets are due. In this case, I'll select June 14th, 2023, and I'm going to type in that due date in that variable placeholder. I'm going to go ahead and click off that or enter, and you'll see that June 14th populated in both of those variable chips. As you can see, it's in the subject line and it's inside the document itself. Now, you keep in mind, you can add additional variables, not just one. I could go ahead and type hello, add a new variable using the app menu, type in variable, and I could say, insert our new variable and say name. And then I can, this will also give me that visual indication that I probably need to update this particular area. Go ahead and type in the name and I'm good to go. And if that variable was placed in multiple locations on the document and it was set to the variable name, it would then populate throughout the entire document.
In this training, I'm just going to give you an added bonus. As I mentioned, this is the email draft building block. Now, you can use this within a plain Google Doc, which I'll show you here in a minute. However, this is a great example of creating a template, a canned response, and emails is one of those ways that we're always sending the same information, and Google has made it easy for you. You can just quickly click on the Gmail icon, pull it up, it will bring it up in preview. Before you click send, you can review it one more time. You can see then it says, hello, Jessica. Here is the due date um, in the criteria of the email and in the subject line, and guess what? Hit send. And that is how it works within the email draft. Then the other thing I wanna show you is just another way of using the variable chips. As I mentioned earlier, it's good for contracts, invoices, and et cetera. This is a privacy policy. And many of us have always done it very similar to what it shows on the screen. You have a highlighted section, you have the brackets, and those are the visual indicators to make sure that you enter that information in. This is a great way to incorporate the variables inside here instead. So you can go, for example, where I find insert company name with the brackets, which is the formal way that we've always done it. You can just go ahead and remove those brackets, start using the variable chips. I'm gonna type in variable. I'm going to now replace it to say company name, hit create. And then I would find the company name other places. So let's say example company name is right here. I could just quickly say company name needs to be populated in this spot and so on. And now I'm ready to complete those variable chips. I go inside here, I'm gonna type in OCIO and it tells you that this particular variable chip is placed two times in this particular document. This is a great way to adjust your contracts, your invoices, your correspondence, your communication, and so much more. With that, I encourage you to check out the resources posted below to learn more about this amazing update. Thank you.